Hi everybody and welcome back to Karin's Orchids and if you're new to my channel, uh, well, very much welcome. This video is going to be about what's in bloom and what's in spike. And for the moment, well, I've been having a unwelcomed heat wave in my apartment with all the heat mats hanging in my stairwell. So the temperature in my apartment has been quite high, really high. And with high temperature comes low humidity. So it's not beneficial for any of my blooms, any of my orchids. So quite poor blooming for now, but well, as I watch and as I examine a few of them, I notice that there's more going on than I expected in the first place. So let's follow me on my little tour, shall we? And as I looked, my Lucky Purchase BC China's Bronze times LC Lee Langford times Golden Cell times Waikiki Gold Lee. She's got a sheath as well. And now she's filling it up with butts. So happy about this look gift purchase and that she really could produce this lovely sheath with butts when I just transitioned her into semi hydroponics. Really nice. And here you can see um, a real favorite of mine that's turning quite large now. It's my Encyclia prismatocarpa. I was wondering when he was gonna bloom for me. Yeah, this spike is gonna develop and get really, really tall, and then it will produce about 20 or so blooms on it. And this is only one week later, and you can see the rapid growth on this spike. Yeah, you can almost count the number of blooms already. Fun to watch. And there will also be two new blooms, bloom spikes on my Bulbophyllum arfakianum times grandiflorum. The previous one, the previous spike, faded, dried out or such. I don't know the reason really, but I did repot it so when the spike was merging. So perhaps that could be the reason, but uh, we shall hope for these two guys to be a bit stronger. I cannot wait for it to bloom again. Such a lovely bloom on this guy. And this little filling of this joy fairy tale, well, she wants to be in a movie. She wants to be on YouTube again, I guess. So she rapidly produced this little new spike. It wasn't long since she uh, finished her blooming. So about one or two months. So really, really nice progress. And she's growing tall and tall as well. I love her. Watering time. And look what I found. Huge sheath on its newest growth and it's got another new growth here it has not yet opened but I think it's a little bit more thick down here at base so it's gonna be a sheath in this one as well first time blooming on the lovely LC or Glades Grand a sword to purchase from last summer several times awarded plant for its beautiful flowers but I would like to give this one an award for its lovely foliage as well isn't she lovely oh we do have some blooms oh my Kitlea Arantioca Mishima spots yeah look at it from my um, Lucke Hall Brazilian bare rooted import in uh, October which I would say September last year perhaps and um, this one came bare rooted and was transitioned into semi hydro in late October last year and now lovely blooms um, not so tall not so wide perhaps four centimeters about but still quite lovely uh, I can't feel any scent to them but uh, <laughs> maybe there is I don't know my nose is uh, well, playing tricks on me all of the time all of the time ah, nice yeah and look at the seed pot on my epidendrum nocturnum well, it's really getting fat. I have no idea what to do with it. Well, we can just hang there. <laughs> and my non-blooming orchid, Androbium macrophyllum, 
is forming something down there. Looks like a sheath on its uh, newest cane, the really strong, lovely cane it produced this year. Well, I had it for three and a half years and I got it as a really, really tiny seedling, about eight centimeters tall. So, well, I think it uh, well can be about time for it to bloom. This is one week later, and my untrained dendrobium eye, amateur dendrobium eye, yeah. Well, it is telling me that this little sheath is growing on really fast. Yeah, just as rapidly as the rest of this orchid is growing. It's growing its sheath down there. I never seen, um, well, the last Litoria type orchid I had. My green, little green apples, um, produced a spike from the apex, I think, and then created the blooms at the end of the uh, spike. So I'm not really sure about this one's behavior, but, well, we shall see in my next update. Yay. And my little Ionicidium popcorn haruri from Vickman is now in bloom. And it got the color to the flowers that I wanted. The little bit more yellowish ones. The one I already got, this one sitting next to it. Yeah, finished its blooming. It's only called Ionicidium popcorn without the variation Haruri on its tag. So, and its blooms were a bit more purple to them than I remember them to be. So, I wanted. The Haru River right here as well, and I was a little bit worried that the, um, its uh, blooms would come out purple as well, but they didn't, so this was a good purchase. And I don't regret buying this one as well. Beautiful Ionicidium Popcorn Haruri from Vickman. This one should be in bloom right now as we speak. This is my RLC Gen Corona Green Genie. Yeah. This is her latest cane. She's progressing really well. Uh, almost the size of her largest one. The largest one that produced two flowers for me two years ago. And I reported her with you, I think, in August, September last year. Since I reckon she needed to be get rid of the scale as well as be placed in a more airy media. And that that could do the trick for her. I don't know, but I think it did. Really well. Good progress. And she's also kept her roots going. A bit more than there were when she was sitting in a more water retentive media. So this is better for her. And she always produces her flowers directly from the apex without a sheath. So, well, there's still hope for this one. And her blooms are quite short lived, only two weeks. So I think she's a lovely Cattleya. Well worth having. Okay, let's just wait. Any day now, I think there will be something coming out of this one. One week later, and there is no longer any shadow of doubt. She will bloom. Three buds coming directly out from the center of the apex without the sheath. Yay. This little gorgeous Ikea, no ID phalaenopsis. The one with the yellow, a bit scented flowers. Are still out, of course. Not long since I got her. Yeah, this one is a color changer. As the flowers turns older, they're getting a bit more pale. But, well, it's okay. Uh, she's reported into sphagnum moss and she seems to enjoy it. <laughs> but the favorite part of this orchid is that it's turned out to be scented. And that was a real, real beautiful discovery for me. Yeah. And my lovely Tetlea Mossiae has now opened up its buds on its following two canes. Yes. 15 centimeters across the petals this time. And three buds, three flowers on this cane, and two on a little bit smaller cane and two that's already finished it's blooming and this one had two as well and they lasted for 28 days 
in a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius till 31 degrees Celsius. So I think that's, uh, yeah, it's a good achievement, 28 days, four weeks in that kind of heat and low humidity. Lovely scented flowers. Doesn't fill my whole apartment, but it surely fills this whole room. So it's enough. Beautiful one from Orkesons Orchidere in Sweden. And yeah, this one is sitting in a, in a clay pot, potted up in bark media mixture with moss and sphagnum moss. A pride and joy, love of my life. Cattleya mossiae. And now sitting in my kitchen window, it's my Cattleya harrisonii, volcano queen times Pinot. Yeah, now she's fading after 23 days. Well, that's, uh, that's an average achievement, I think. Average blooming time. But, yeah, it's totally fine. Lovely, lovely scented. And um, I moved her since she's still sitting in her bark media. And the one next to her is sitting in bark. The ones behind are also sitting in bark. And bark, bark, bark and some more organic media. So, this makes it easier for me to uh, keep track on when these guys were lost being watered. Yeah. Easy to reach, easy to water. And to remember to water, I hope. And um, yeah, here's the um, Papipedalum Pinocchio. This one is its um, second bud to open in my care. And a few more buds behind it, as the sequential bloomer it is. Yeah, lovely one, lovely foliage, healthy plant, large plant, and let's see what else. Um, yeah, and here's my second one, the one that I purchased with a broken spike. Yes. But I fell in love with this foliage. A little bit more light green than this one. So, I wonder if there will be any difference between the flowers when this guy finally decides to bloom for me and put out a new spike. Ah, that remains to be seen. And Mordiae, my little Mordiae. I got it in bud, not in bloom, but in bud. Yeah, and a bloom opened up quite small, and it increased in size the last couple of days. And I think Mordier has got the loveliest foliage of them all. Mottled leaves, light green background, and here you can see my perfume petalums all lined up. Hmm. Quite a few with mottled leaves. And here we got some more perfume petalums. My Rochildianum crosses lined up on the shelf above it. So finally, my, I would like to call this one Miltoniopsis. Instead of Miltonia, as it says on its tag. Um, yeah, how many are there? Only four, but four blooms are much better than nothing. Um, in my last uh, Bloom and Spike video, um, previous spike, its buds blasted, all of them, open up a bit, but uh, and the, uh, the edges uh, to the blooms turned um, brownish, and the blooms all dropped. I think it had to do with something with the uh, fungus that I've been having in that area. As you can see, its leaves are a bit affected as well. But anyway, this means that the fungus in that area is treated well since I didn't move this one, it still stays put. So I didn't move it. So I guess the uh, fungus are, yeah, are gone. Thanks for that. Um, nice blooms. And um, yeah, scented, lovely scented. A little bit uh, rose to the scent. Yes. And I guess they will open up a bit more. And this is now a little bit fleshy and, uh, well, they just opened up. So they will get a little bit bigger in a couple of days, I guess. Um, the thing is, this one is my Miltonia Sunset. Look at this foliage. It's green. Light green, beautiful foliage. 
This one is more silvery green. A little bit more dull. And that tells me, at least, that the difference between a Metoniopsis and a regular Miltonia. So, but the blooms are similar. The patterning on the blooms are quite uh, similar. But not, um, yeah, but not really. Not the same, but similar. So, well, I think this one is a Miltoniopsis. It just says Miltonia on its tag. I didn't I didn't acquire that much knowledge about these guys since I didn't think I was able to bloom them. So I didn't get another one uh, after my, yeah, my first one and only one that I got before this one a couple of years ago. Then I didn't buy any more. Yes. But this proves that I can, I really can uh, bloom them. So, yeah. So maybe I will get a few more. Diff with different colors to the flowers in future. I would like to have the ones with the white background and uh, yellow and uh, pink or red to the center as well. But that will be another day. All right. So my non-trained eye on dendrobium orchids is telling me that this is not the plague. This is something else. Dendrobium chrysotoxum. This is its newest cane, and I've seen on pictures on Google that it produces um, spikes from the upper part of the cane, but I'm not sure. Are these guys nubbins, or will they develop to be uh, spikes? Or is this just uh, the way this orchid looks? If you got this orchid, if you know a little bit more about it than I do, Please put a comment in the comment section and tell me. Is this gonna be some blooms or am I just hoping for? I mean, am I just hoping in vain? Tell me please, guys. And this never ended story, my cochleada, my Prostechia cochleada, has now been in bloom since the 8th of December last year. Seven months in a row, constantly in bloom. You can see where his old blooms has been. Yeah. And finally, when it's too tired to bloom, it will stop blooming and the spike will turn yellow and fade away. And she's already starting on her next growth. And this one will grow rapidly in this kind of heat during summertime. So the circle continues throughout the fall and she will probably be in bloom again for seven months, even next year. Yeah, well, will it be necessary for me to add that this one is a beautiful thing to have in your collection? Prostechia cochleada. And my newly purchased Ketleia gescaliana cerulea is really, really filling up her sheath, one of them, at least. You can see the buds shining through, so they are progressing really, really fast. Nice! So, it will be sooner than I thought. And I've got to be aware of what variety this one really is. If it's cerulea or a little bit more typo, pinkish one. Or not. Nice! And if you watch my quite recent Vachara Francis Fox Care Collab update, I showed you that she was starting to produce a sheath down there in our newest strong unifoliate growth. So in about six months we will see some blooms. Since she's gonna develop a 30 centimeters long or shall we say tall spike before the buds are created at the end of the spike. So around Christmas and let's for hope for the coloration on these guys to be a little bit more vibrant. We shall see. It's gonna be really exciting to discover what she does this time. Really healthy. Let's look at my Phalaenopsis now a bit. I was waiting for this. My Phalaenopsis Bellina Green times 987 from Lucke to open her buds up before I uploaded this video. But she was a bit late, so if I wanted to produce and upload this video in the right month, the month of June, well, I would not be able to show her in bloom. But anyway, there will be a number of blooms.
on two spikes. This is going to be lovely. And you can see the shadings. Her flowers are going to be quite green, as the tag said. Green. And I do love green blooms, so yes. So lovely. And the one sitting next to her is my quite recent purchase. Um, a replacement plant, Phalaenopsis abuenensis variation simanis. From uh, Rulke. And yeah, I repotted her and she kept her spike. But the spike is, uh, well, can you see it? What? Well, perhaps here. The spike is, uh, yeah, it's developing. It's not dying. So at least it's developing. And the uh, transition into uh, sphagnomas from Bark Media didn't do her that much harm. But I think it stalled the spike a bit, uh, a little bit. But it's still growing. And now I can see that the bud is forming. At the end of the spike so it will be fine so in yeah in the month of july in my next update she she's gonna be in bloom i think well this orchid is also putting out a spike it's my phalaenopsis bornensis and it bloomed last summer and i showed her to you last summer this is a new spike and this is an old spike and I read about her on Google that the flower spikes were supposed to be sequential and last for about one and a half years. But the spike I got her with didn't last very long and surely wasn't sequential. <laughs> but it bloomed. But this one could be. Yeah, now she's got two spikes. Lovely blooms on this one and, and she's a really, really good grower. And she's sitting in bark media. She seems to like it in her bark. So she will stay in bark. And this Phalaenopsis corner survey red. Um, yeah, recent purchase from Swerta. Um, <laughs> look at the spike. And the crazy way that it's um, producing her spike. I mean, <laughs> look at it. Strange. And she arrived with three spikes. I don't know where the third spike is. Perhaps I just imagined it. But... There's a little spike down there, but it doesn't seem to have the strength enough to uh, develop correctly yet. I better be a little bit forgiving. But, well, next month we'll see some blooms. And, yeah, there really is a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of spikes, sheaths and such everywhere in this apartment. But, well, I figured it, well, showing you spikes without any uh, substance to them. Wouldn't be that very interesting. <laughs> but things are really, really happening at a fast rate here now. So I guess this kind of heat has been a bit beneficial after all. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I, I guess that was all for this month. And next month I will show you a couple of more blues, I guess. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys very much for watching and tuning into my little channel. And... That you support my channel and if you like this video press a thumbs up share comment and subscribe and well i talk to you soon bye bye guys have a lovely day